synergy, a corporate buzzword that's hard to kill. It's right up there with drilling down, reaching out and moving forward. But it's obviously still popular in the VW Group boardroom because the platform that underpins this new Volkswagen Touareg also sits under the Audi A7, the Bentley Bentayga, the Lamborghini Urus and the Porsche Cayenne. Talk about shifting the paradigm, it's pretty much a synergasm. So let's take a look. And remember, if you want all the details, you can read my written review at carsguide.com.au. And if you enjoy this video, make sure to hit subscribe so you can stay on top of all our latest videos. Still a five-seater, this third-generation Touareg is longer, wider and lower than the close to 10-year-old second-gen version that it replaces. But it's close to 100 kilograms lighter because half the metal used in its construction is now aluminium. And rather than the previous multi-model range, the initial Touareg lineup for Australia has been paired back to just one variant, appropriately called the Launch Edition. We'll get into the tech and equipment highlights shortly, and there are plenty of them, but let's get the price tag out of the way. At just under $90,000, the big V-Dub competes with a host of premium SUVs, including entry versions of its Audi A7 cousin, Mercedes-Benz's GLE, and the Volvo XC90. And VW says this launch edition's standard spec is like a tasting plate of available options, with an entry-level model below it and a flagship above due before the end of the year. As you can see, Volkswagen's sleek and serious corporate look has been successfully applied to this sizeable canvas. It's conservative, but to my eyes anyway, very grown up and neatly composed. These squinty headlights are tricky LED matrix. The standard rims are no less than 20 inch in diameter. And the application of chrome and other bright metal finishes on the outside of the Touareg certainly stand it apart. Crack open the bonnet and you'll find a three litre turbo diesel V6 variations of which are also used in the Q7 and KN, sending drive to all four wheels via an eight-speed automatic transmission. Close to 200 kilowatts is a decent peak power figure, but when maximum torque hits the 600 newton meter zone, you're talking serious pulling power. But before we bring it to life, let's take a look at the Tuareg's interior because it's actually pretty cool. Big news is the availability of this InnoVision cockpit. It's a 12 inch configurable instrument display next to a giant 15 inch TFT media touchscreen. All customizable, all beautiful, but it costs. Standard issue is a conventional analog instrument cluster with a seven inch info screen in the center and a 9.2 inch media screen with gesture control alongside. This optional glass-fronted tour de force will set you back an extra eight big ones. But no matter which way you go, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are included. And there's more connectivity options than you can poke a stick at. You're immersed in a world of top shelf leather and brushed metal accents. There's heaps of space and lots of storage options. And these front seats are 18 way electrically adjustable and there are no less than eight different massage functions. Rear seaters benefit from a slide mechanism that shifts 160 millimetres and backrest angle adjustment of up to 21 degrees. There's plenty of head, leg and shoulder room in the back as well as a fold down armrest complete with two cup holders and there's climate control ventilation for back seaters as well. Around the back there may not be a third row seat but the cargo space is enormous. There's much more room than the outgoing model. The air suspension means you can actually drop the car to help with loading heavy items. And dropping the split folding rear seat opens up enough space for a small suburban subdivision. But enough of the practicalities. Let's get driving. Since its launch in the early noughties, Volkswagen believes the Touareg has evolved from an off-road focus to become more of an all-rounder. 
and we've driven this new car on some great touring roads across Tasmania from east to west to find out if that's true. Volkswagen claims this new Touareg will run from 0 to 100 kmh in 6.5 seconds, which is pretty rapid for a 2.1 ton SUV. That said, just under 200 kilowatts doesn't exactly set the world on fire in terms of power, but around 600 newton meters is plenty of torque. And the mid-range is fat, there's lots of thrust available, and you can see why this car is uh, rated to tow a three and a half ton brake trailer. The transmission is nice and smooth, it's an eight speed auto. And flick it over to manual mode, and while the shifts aren't as snappy as a dual clutch transmission, they're certainly quick enough to add an unexpected fun factor to driving this big Touareg. We've covered a combination of city driving and some coarse chip bitumen open highway and even some rutted dirt road sections. And the Touareg has performed beautifully. Suspension is by struts at the front and multi-links at the rear with most of the componentry made out of aluminium to reduce unsprung weight. And the Touareg feels surprisingly light on its feet. You've got adaptive dampers and an air suspension system as well so you can uh, adjust its mode. It's a great touring car, it's, it's quiet. There's also a sport mode which seems a little counterintuitive for a big SUV like this. I don't actually see it as a track day hero and on the open road it is quite uncomfortable. But in the normal setting and particularly in comfort, it's just that, very comfortable. As you might be able to see behind me, there's been a bit of snow down here in Tassie while we've been here and we're driving on a dirt road which has turned to mud, slush and ice and the Touareg's been really confidence inspiring on this kind of surface. No dramas, doesn't even raise a bead of perspiration. The electromechanically assisted steering doesn't exactly deliver the last word in terms of road feel but it's nicely weighted and points well enough. One thing I would say is that the lane guidance function, that's a little box in the drive system that I unchecked pretty rapidly because in cornering it wants to turn the wheel prompting you into the corner quite early and it's pretty determined about it and I found it off-putting and um, switched it off. But overall in terms of cornering through these sweeping bends, the car feels planted and stable and predictable. It's uh, a very easy car to drive. When you're in a car of this size and mass, particularly one that's going to be used for towing on a regular basis, you want to make sure that you can wash off speed effectively. And sure enough, the Touareg has big discs all around with six piston calipers at the front and squeeze that pedal and yeah, a lot of power there and nice and progressive. In terms of fuel economy, Volkswagen claims 7.4 litres per 100 kilometres on the combined cycle. On this two-day launch drive, we haven't been able to match that. On the computer, we've seen numbers around 12, 12.5 litres per 100 k's. And safety has taken a big step forward with the key word being assist. Additions include park assist, traffic jam assist, emergency assist, front and rear cross traffic assist, plus a whole lot more including pedestrian monitoring and eight airbags including rear side bags. Trust me, you'll need spec sheet assist to take it all in. This new Touareg has been improved in all the right areas. Safety, dynamics, media and more. It's beautifully built it's very composed and competent, and we're looking forward to driving the variants that will sit under it and above it arriving before the end of the year. Choose.